the legacy media, which uh, worked hard to slam former President Trump at every turn, is making every effort to pump up President Biden, even when America is facing multiple crises. Uh, reporting on President Biden's first trip overseas, the Associated Press wrote that there were sighs of relief from European leaders who welcomed his pitch that the U.S. was, as the AP put it, once more a reliable ally with a steady hand at the wheel. Now, again, a steady hand at the wheel is not how I would describe President Biden. You know, he was, uh, there was questions about this uh, post-G7 summit that he had with uh, President Putin. And it, they, they talked about his mother, they talked about family. It wasn't too tough, apparently, on Putin. But uh, he didn't like unscripted questions from reporters. After his press conference, post-Putin summit, he, uh, he's, he does his press conference, and then as he's walking out, he's asked a question by uh, a CNN reporter. And I, I want to play this clip for you. Clip six, please. Why are you so confident he'll change his behavior, Mr. President? Yeah, I'm not confident he'll change his behavior. What the hell, what do you do all the time? So when did I say I was confident? You I said, said in the next six I months said, be able to determine. What I said was, let's get it straight. I said what will change their behavior is that the rest of the world reacts to them and it diminishes their standing in the world. I'm not confident of anything. I'm just stating a fact. But given his past behavior has not changed, and in that press conference after sitting down with you for several hours, he denied any involvement in cyber attacks, he downplayed human rights abuses, he even refused to say Alexei Navalny's name. So how does that account to a constructive meeting as President, President Putin? Prime you don't understand that, you're in your own business. If you find Wow. If you don't understand that, you're in the wrong business. A little testy he is. Joining me now to uh, give an analysis of the president's first overseas trip, Congressman Michael Waltz, who serves on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. He represents Florida's 6th Congressional District. Congressman, welcome back to the program. Hey, good to be, good to be with you. Uh, well, I, you know, I'm going to give the president a pass on some of the gaffes he made, mi mixing up Syria and Libri Libya uh, and, you know, kind of just losing his place. Look, different time zone, uh, you know, late late nights, busy days. But the, the press is really puffing up this president as if all of a sudden America is back. And that's the same line that the president is using. What's your take? on America's standing post President Biden's first international trip? Well, I have to I have to be candid with you. I'm not going to give him a pass. Uh, this is a it's a disturbing trend. And, you know, part of these foreign leader engagements is really sizing each other up uh, because at the end of the day, uh, deterrence, keeping the peace is comprised of, of two key portions. One is having the, the capability but importantly, is having the political will. Uh, and when you can't keep your country straight, when you can't and aren't willing to from, uh, from the press corps, uh, and when you can't even fill uh, a five-hour meeting uh, with enough substance uh, with, with Russia of all countries, uh, look, I, I find that incredibly disturbing. But I just want to take a step back. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, this Putin summit happened in the first place. It shouldn't have happened. Uh, he needed it far more than we did. Uh, it was a reward. It gives him an international stage to be on parity with the United States. Uh, and in the wake of multiple attacks emanating from Russian soil uh, on our critical infrastructure, on our oil and gas pipeline and colonial, on our food supply, uh, you know, the fact that he's holding two Americans hostage, uh, both veterans, uh, the fact that he is rapidly uh, modernizing his uh, nuclear missile uh, fleet and bragging about it. Wake of all of these things, uh, all, let's not forget putting hundreds of thousands on the border of Ukraine uh, and uh, isolating, you know, with the, the apparent acquiescence of the Biden administration, isolating uh, our, our allies in uh, Poland and Ukraine with the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. In the wake of all that, we're going to give them a, a kind of a, you know, happy-go-lucky uh, summit uh, to, to, to sit down and, and decide, 
I don't know what. I don't really know what came of all of this. Contrast the Trump administration's approach to Russia with what we saw between Biden and Putin. Well, you know, the media wants to focus on the, the Helsinki uh, press conference. And President Trump, you know, agree with it or disagree with it, he was consistent in believing that if he maintained uh, a, a relationship with heads of state, friend and foe alike, whether it was North Korea, Russia, Japan, uh, you know, we can, we can go down the list, uh, that that was a, um, that that was a powerful tactic in, in diplomacy. But I'm focused on action. Uh, and more Russians died. Uh, more Russians were taken out by the United States military under President Trump uh, than any other president since Reagan. Uh, and I'm talking about the hundreds of Russian mercenaries that dared to try to attack American soldiers in Syria. And Trump gave the authorization uh, for our Air Force to take them down. Contrast that with uh, the Trump administration providing lethal aid uh, to the Ukrainians. Uh, after the Obama administration, uh, in response to a Russian invasion, gave them blankets and uh, MREs, sanctioned on the Nord Stream uh, pipeline, holding uh, our NATO allies to account after decades of them promising to live up to their defense uh, uh, quit, um, uh, commitments. Uh, and I can, I can keep going down the list, rebuilding our military, plussing up our defense budgets, investing in modernization, particularly nuclear modernization which the Biden administration now wants to cut. Uh, so actions speak far louder than words, uh, but the Biden administration's taken the opposite approach. So let's throw out a few tough phrases. The media just runs with it, but the actions tell another story. We're soft. Putin smells weakness. Uh, he knows there's weakness in the White House right now, and we're going to see him continue to push. But if you were to just take the media at face value, it was Trump that was soft on Russia, and it is Biden who's tough. Well, yeah. I mean, I literally heard uh, a, a, the CNN re a reporter, uh, you know, ask, a, ask uh, you know, former NSC staffer Fiona Hill uh, what she thought of, of Biden's much tougher stance than Trump. Um, just, again, just completely ignoring the facts and completely ignoring uh, the policies. You didn't see these cyber attacks happen under the Trump administration. Uh, you didn't see uh, further incursions into Ukraine. Uh, you saw uh, Russian mercenaries stop uh, cold in their tracks uh, in Syria uh, because they knew uh, that the political will was there uh, in, in, in terms of deterrence. They knew that, uh, you know, over cake with President Z at Mar-a-Lago, uh, Chinese President Z. Uh, President Trump stepped out and ordered a cruise missile strike into Syria in response to chemical attacks that the Obama administration had let go on and on and on. Uh, so, look, again, actions speak far louder than words, except right. with the mainstream media. But I think, <laughs> well, exactly. But I think it's the media that loses credibility on this trip, not just the Biden administration. Uh, very quickly, uh, Congressman uh, Waltz, before we run out of time, the uh, Biden is claiming NATO is back. Yet under the Trump administration, we actually got countries to pitch in and pay their fair share. I thought NATO was working quite well under the Trump administration. Well, that's right. I mean, we we realized NATO realized uh, several hundred billion more in contributions under the Trump administration, uh, and it depends on which health. Nope. I think we uh, we lost some congressmen. I, if we lost you. We'll catch you next time. Thanks so much for uh, joining us.